Hello, everyone. It's time for Live with CCO. We're on episode 71. I have so much fun doing these. And the reason is this is a casual get together. We get to talk about uh, interesting topics that you've asked about. It's kind of low key. And, you know, we just have to have we get to have fun with it. One of the questions that come came in and comes in often periodically is about the option of new coders, you're newly credentialed, and is it going to be beneficial to you to get extra credentials? So should a new inexperienced medical coder get multiple credentials? The thought process behind this usually is, hey, I don't have a lot of experience to bring to the table. However, I could pick up another credential. Would that widen my opportunity pathway to getting a job if I'm new to the industry? And, you know, the fact is, is, yeah, it, it might be able to. So we're going to look at some of uh, the options and we're going to look at the pros. We're going to wrap up with the pros and cons of, uh, you know, do you go ahead and uh, invest in getting more credentials? So should a new inexperienced medical coder get multiple credentials? I'm curious to your thoughts if this is a question that uh, you have thought and have you been given any advice regarding this you know it, has anybody given you suggestions have they said positive or negative uh, comments uh, have they and what did you do maybe this is your background where when you started in the industry what did you choose to do cuz your insight of what you experienced will benefit benefit others so i see well hello dr skyler connell if you don't know um uh skyler he has worked with us quite a bit in the past and I always got to see his name pop up. Glad to see you again. Uh, again, I do see lots of people popping in. So feel free to put your comments as we go along. Now, I think the first thing we should do is understand what's the purpose of the credential itself. I went out to... Uh, three major heavy hitters in the credentialing world. And um, I'll explain just a little bit about each one that I picked. I could have went and got a bunch of them, but <clears throat> each, all three of these are unique in some way. And what they state about their credential, this gives us the purpose and the reason why a person would get credentialed. Think about, um, you know, would you go to a doctor that, uh, a medical doctor that wasn't an MD or a DO? No. Uh, you know, it, for, uh, you know, a heart uh, condition. No. You know, you want a, a doctor who's been uh, through medical school and gotten a degree as well as possibly even going to a specialist uh, would you go to a podiatrist for your heart arrhythmia? No. You know, uh, would you go to a cardiologist to have the bunion removed from your foot? No. <laughs> right. So credentials show your educational path. Um, I wanted to first start with AHIMA. Now, to talk a little bit about the credentialing organization first, AHIMA has been around since the 1920s. They are what I consider the old stodgy grandpa, uh, very knowledgeable, uh, not particularly user friendly per se, better than they were a decade ago. However, they are absolutely the standard, the highest standard that most organizations uh, were familiar with. And they not only have a certification for medical coding, but they also have a degree program for the industry. Uh, they have an associate's, which I'm not sure if they were going to keep that, and, but, and a bachelor's degree. So in other words, you would get a uh, the bachelor's degree and be able to then sit for that certification. It doesn't entail just coding. It's much broader than that. Uh, it's a health information uh, uh, credential. 
but they are one of the first ones that carried a coding credential. And they stayed in an industry that values education and experience. AHIMA credentials are proof of a robust education and an ongoing commitment to staying relevant in a complex and evolving space. I thought that was an excellent statement. There were several things that they stayed on the website, but this sums it up. And you, uh, it's, you know, finding those key phrases that tells you the purpose behind the credential, they nailed it. The AAPC came out in the 80s. They've had some evolutions and uh, expanded. Uh, they grew very quickly, and now they are uh, synonymous in the industry. Uh, HEMA and the AAPC, they're, they're pretty much an even, uh, on an even keel. They are known more so for outpatient credentials. That's had been their mainstay for a long time. AHIMA had mostly been known for inpatient realm. And of course, that's part of that's a sign of the times. But what makes the AAPC unique is they have broadened, they have uh, multiple credentials and specialty credentials. I think of them as the hip uncle, uh, and they're much more user friendly to navigate even just their website and stuff. Uh, so they had stated at, that medical coding requires a particular discipline. Medical coders are considered part of the medical team, often working very closely with providers, management, and payers, a scholar, detective, educator, and problem solver. Medical coders possess particular skills. Again, that gives you a good explanation of the purpose for uh, the credential, it shows that you have a particular discipline uh, that you've both studied for it and you've proven that uh, that you are uh, um, good at that skill. Now, um, ACETUS is a, they're a credentialing organization, but they're different. This is more into CDI and compliance. Um, they are very well known in that industry. And uh, the reason I picked them is because, again, they are the gold standard for that industry. One of them, there are others, but uh, they have an outpatient CDI credential. And it says that the credential represents a mark of excellence. That was kind of the key that I was looking for, that each one of the credentials you get from these organizations show a mark of excellence uh, for the CDI professional operating in outpatient setting and provides employers with a baseline of competency for existing staff or potential hires. And that sums up, again, what's the purpose of the credential that you're looking at? It's a baseline of competency for existing staff or potential hires. You want your employee to um, uh, have that competency. And if you're looking to fill positions, again, it shows that baseline competency for potential hires. It requires a particular set of disciplines and it is proof of a robust education and commitment to staying relevant in what that arena or that field needs. That sums it up, right? That's the purpose for your credential. Can you do a medical coding job without a credential? Yes, you can. Can you get hired to do the medical coding job without a credential? No, you probably can't. The people in the industry that are working as medical coders without a credential were already employees most likely. And they've either transitioned into that job and got training on the job or um, are like. Now, does it happen, you know, out there? Yes, maybe it does. But it is 99% of the time, you're not going to get hired to be a medical coder without a credential. And then the second thing uh, to make note is, 
where you get your credential from. There are all types of medical coding credentials and a lot of them and diplomas and certificates and stuff, but a lot of them are not worth the paper that they're written on. Uh, you need to make sure that wherever you get your first credential, medical coding credential, is from an established and reputable uh, certification organization. If you're ever in doubt, if you see something and you want to know if it's reputable, feel free to drop us a line at CCO. We'll let you know. Uh, uh, we can vet it for you or let you know what we've heard in the industry. We have students from all over the place. So I would encourage you to reach out to your mentors, your peers, other people in the industry. If you're new, just breaking in and uh, ask them what they've heard. Don't rely on a website and don't rely on the comments from people on the website because I can't tell you how many times I've popped on a website where I saw something was pretty interesting. Come to find out that was their employees <laughs> you know, or their cousin. You know, So you, you have to take that with a grain of salt. That happens quite a bit. Bit. I'm um, looking over here. It says, by the time I took my second conditional, Tom says, uh, I will have a few months of experience. I decided to study for a second credential as a way to keep my skills up while hunting. AAPC having a cell entered into my decision. Very good, Tom. You make a point that I was going to highlight. That is right. One of the way, one of the purposes to pick up a, another credential is to keep yourself sharp. So um, that's that's good. Um, and uh, the CDIP credential from AHIMA is excellent. That is absolutely true. That is another gold standard in that CDI realm. I would encourage you to look into them. And um, also, uh, again, this is not a list to go by just three. I wanted to pick three three that had valuable statements about their credentials and that were well known. And these three fit the bill. So again, there are some reputable ones, but go to somebody that has been in the industry for a while and uh, and have them vet if you're unfamiliar. And if you're new to the inter industry, you may be, you know, not as familiar because you're new to the industry, right? And um, there are some fly-by-night type of um, organizations out there. Now, what are your credentialing options? And um, Skylar brought this up in that there are more than one credentialing organization that has overlap on credentials. He mentioned AHIMA also having a CDI type credential. They do. And uh, I kind of alluded a moment ago that, you know, in the past, AHIMA was known for inpatient, AAPC was known for outpatient, uh, them being the two main uh, credentialing bodies for a long time. And um, then they both broadened. Now, AHIMA doesn't have as many credential options as the AAPC, but they also are the national standard of, you know, excellence. In, in my opinion, you'll have most um, um, or, uh, most employers uh, recognize that. So again, you can weigh th those out. Um, and oh, I Lori said I uh, get asked about the NHA credential frequently. And if I remember right, Lori, you're going to have to um, uh, let me know for sure. But I believe that is a national um, credential that some schools that will have you test for. It's test, it is a, it's is an exam, uh, but it's not well recognized. Um, quite honestly, it's a, it just doesn't hold the weight or the standard that some of the others, if that's the one I think it is, um, uh, a, a, if, and again, I'm not sure, but if you are going to a school and they say that they will pay for you to take this credential um, when you graduate, uh, and it's not from AHIMA or the AAPC, then it's probably not worth um, 
as much. Uh, most employers won't even reckon, know what it is. I could be wrong, but I, that that is one I think um, is like that. Um, let's see. Christina says, hi, from Florida. I have my CPC credential and because I don't have a job experience, I'm trying to compensate it with more education. I'm now taking the COC. See, that's brilliant. That's very good, Christina. And that goes to, it speaks to what Tom had said too. Uh, go ahead. If anything, what that tells me as a potential employer is that not only did you invest your time to get your original credential, but you're broadening your horizons and uh, investing in an additional credential. And it will help. Either the CD, and um, um, Skylar goes on to say, either the CDIP or the CCDS is highly recommended for CDI professionals. That is correct. And that is um, Dr. Connell's specialty. So he would be an expert to advise. And that's what you need to do. You need to make sure that you are taking the time to um, have people who are in the know vet and give you advice for those National Health Association. Yeah, I think most employers seem to prefer the AABC and AHEMA, Lori said, and, and she's correct. That's that's gonna be their mainstay. So let's look here at your credentialing options. Now, I did not divide this up into the different credentials that you could get, but by subject. Um, the first, do you want a coding credential? For the most part, all of you, that's what you're thinking. So you, but I'm making an assumption here. I'm making an assumption that you have gotten uh, your first credential is a coding credential, whether inpatient or outpatient. All right. And then um, uh, that there, there are more than one type. Some people may consider, and it may picking up another credential. Let's say that you got the CC uh, the CPC through the AAPC, and you say, you know what, I want to be well-rounded. I want to uh, be uh, certified with more than one organization. So they go and pick up the AHIMA equivalent, or you choose to get the um, CPC as your coding credential uh, for outpatient, but then you go get the CCS with AHIMA, which is their inpatient credential. So you are duly, you're, you're certified with two organizations. There are a lot of advantages to that, that, that opens up your peer group. And um, it means that you're invested in those organizations, which has a lot of perks with it. Uh, what if you get your coding credential, and then you want to back it up with a billing credential. You have a couple options out there. Uh, there are some uh, uh, good billing ones, and uh, that is a double kind of a um, double whammy there. You got the coding and you got the billing, and they are definitely sister credentials, um, <clears throat> but they aren't twins, identical twins. <laughs> They're not even fraternal twins. <laughs> no, um, that would be, uh, you think of that as like a sister and a brother. So uh, again, you can do the coding, you can do the billing. Billers who know coding are better billers. Coders who know billing are better coders. So uh, uh, that also really opens up a lot of opportunities. Actually, you will find that it's easier to get a job in billing than it is and as coding as new. And I, my opinion is one, there's a lot of turnover in billing uh, it, in my experience. And um, there's always a need for billers. There's not as many people in the industry. It uh, Statistically, the AAPC has done uh, payment. Um, they do an, an every year a um the, what do they call that? A reimbursement. They let you, your pay salary uh, for different credentials and so on. And they do a survey to get that information. And billers make just a little bit more than coders, which I was surprised. I thought that would not be true. However, uh, it's a little easier to hire somebody with no experience in billing uh, uh, versus coding. And 
uh, again, I, I think one of the reasons that I mentioned is there's turnover, but there's a lot of things you can do in the billing department that they can train you quickly and you become efficient quickly with uh, versus with coding. Mm, you, um, it takes longer to become efficient. And so that might be something that um, you might want to consider. And uh, Skylar says the compliance one is so much fun. Yeah, I'm getting ready to sit for one of those. And Sharice says, now that I have my conch, good for you. I'm looking to get deeper in that area. Good for you. Great credential. I'm excited for you. I was just looking at that one actually today when I was doing the research. So now we've gone through the coding, the billing, risk adjustment. I have said for years that if you are new, say you've got the CPC or uh, initial uh, coding credential, risk adjustment is an area that they will hire new coders. A lot of times these jobs are not um, full-time, they could be contract work, meaning that you may only work three months out of a year, but it builds experience quickly. They're willing to take a chance on you. It's only one code set, which also helps. If you are interested and you like ICD-10, then that might be an area for you to go. In If I had to do it all over again, I would have said that um, I would have jumped into risk adjustment a lot earlier than I did, although I got in really early. So I guess, uh, but that is an excellent uh, avenue. I do advise a lot of coders to consider getting into risk adjustment. There is a risk adjustment credential. It is over just the one code set. However, just because you're good at ICD-10 doesn't make you qualified to sit for the exam. You need to take a course. And we have a, a brilliant and fabulous risk adjustment course that will um, get you ready to take the CRC. It is a credential I hold and I absolutely love it. And I work heavily in this area. Not that I'm biased, but uh, but I do know that uh, that can get your foot in the door much faster and build experience up quickly. Mm. Uh, Lori makes a good point. She said, I usually recommend against AHIMA's CCA. Uh, that's not the, the CCS, but the CCA as a uh, uh, employers see that more as an apprentice credential. Uh, so that is noteworthy. Yeah. And, um, but, uh, that that it doesn't carry the weight as a CCS. So I'm with Lori. It's almost like why invest the time and the money for a CCA when you could go ahead and with a little bit more effort, um, uh, go ahead and get the CCS, which does carry weight. Now, compliance. Compliance is an area that um, covers all the code sets, However, you aren't as heavily into the code sets. This, this is showing that you're adequate, you're able to use the code set, but we're talking about the rules and the regulations surrounding the business of medicine. And I don't mean just the money area, but the rules about, you know, how to do a proper query, uh, the, the different rules on, um, emergency rooms and um, payback or uh, oh there's a whole list of laws and stuff now they're just went out of my head but uh, compliance is an area that you could specialize in and with a coding credential and a compliance credential that would open a lot of doors for you uh, you're you're going to be more into a supervisory administrative type position. Uh, I would advise you that if you like compliance, if you get in there and you research it a little bit, these though are positions where you're going to have to be able to articulate in front of people as well as via uh, online communication. So if, and now this is strictly my opinion, but if you are an extreme introvert, uh, I don't see maybe compliance as an avenue that you would find fun uh, because it, 
tends to be somewhat confrontational, not a bad way. It's not like you're going in telling them what they're doing wrong, but you do end up um, nixing a lot of things or uh, it also gets into education and you have to be able to communicate um, in, in front of people a lot of times. So if that's something that you really enjoy uh, and it uh, gets into a little bit of the law, uh, I think compliance is a lot of fun. But again, look at my personality. You can tell I'm an out there type person. Uh, Denise says, I was a biller before I became a coder. Once I got into coding, I started obtaining credentials. I currently have eight certifications. Kudos to you, Denise. And um, I have three more exams to set for the remainder of 2020. See, that's excellent. I'm curious, uh, Denise, if... Uh, you, uh, if you were working uh, as a biller, how, you know, how you did your credentials, did you jump out and get another credential right away? Uh, and that job, how that all laid out, that's, the, Denise would be a person to reach out to. She obviously has experience uh, with that pathway. And uh, does CCO have a compliance course or an auditing course? We did. Uh, although we do not right now. Emily says, I'm hoping to pair my CPC with an RHIA. Good for you. I was hoping it would increase my promotability and make me more marketable. Absolutely, it will. And the RHIA is an excellent pairing with the CPC. You'd be duly certified within two organizations. The RHIA is a bachelor degree uh, program. And so that's setting you up for those administrative roles. Very good plan. Christine says, what's the best way to retain your knowledge while looking for a coding and billing job? I have my CPC, CRC, and CPB. Christina, I would think about an internship. Um, and we can, at the end of the presentation, we can put up a um, link regarding our internship. That would keep you fresh. So moving on from compliance, we go to CDI, which is documentation and improvement. Um, <clears throat> this is an area versus compliance, in my opinion. If you're CDI, you kind of sit behind and you're auditing, you know, and so I would think that um, um, CDI versus compliance, both good pairs, though, but they are a little bit different. We're literally looking at the documentation and helping uh, our providers improve the documentation and catching opportunities. And um, there might be a little bit of uh, communication, but there's a difference between education and CDI, where you're doing provider education versus CDI, where you're doing a lot of auditing. And uh, so if you have more of a behind the scenes uh, persona, then CDI really gets into the auditing. Uh, auditing. Now, I do want to say, and <clears throat> again, we are strictly working on my opinion here, but um, auditor, the auditing credential, I don't see that um, going anywhere for a while. First of all, you really have no weight under your belt by getting an auditing credential when you're new. Auditing credentials would be for people who have been in the industry doing the job for like five years. And then, you know, but why would you get a? Why would you be um, taken seriously as an auditor if you have no experience? So, again, auditing is not on this list. That's why. Um, and oh, good. Denise listed out the years and her credentials. That's fabulous, Denise. Really, really excited for you. Very, very good. Tangela says, I got certified in November of the 21 as a CPC. I was thinking about a new credential, but not sure which way to go. All right. So then this list is for you. And we're going to talk about some pros and cons. Uh, another area that you might be interested in is practice management. I think too many practice managers don't have a really good coding and billing um, understanding so that if you choose to get into practice management, having that credential uh, would allow you to uh, be much more marketable. Now, 
practice management means that you're going to go in the office and you're going to run the office ultimately. Uh, it may be a stepping stone. Uh, however, uh, the way that this would be good is if you have a background in any type of supervision a supervisory role, any uh, experience in HR type work um, is, is good. Also, uh, practice management deals with people a lot. Uh, and you have to, um, I would say, be a pretty even calm person to, to excel at practice management. You also need to be very heavily invested in your ability to be a multitasker because you're going to take on lots of roles. Practice management does a lot of different things. And there is actually uh, Paycom is who I would look into for practice management. Uh, I did put these links at, at the end, but I see we've got that linked up there. In my opinion, again, humble opinion, they are, they are one of the leaders in practice management and uh, well-known. And they also, their organization really supports each other. Uh, so uh, meaning that they have areas or conversations and areas that if you come into a snafu or you run into a problem, then they're constantly networking. So one of the best er um, organizations that network. So, and then the other um, is to go to what Denise said, where you start picking up specialty credentials. Maybe there's a credential or a uh, body system um, that resonates with you. Uh, cardiology, interventional radiology. Um, let's see, Denise says, after I obtained my CPC, I got my first coding job with HCC. Uh-huh. Shortly after, continued to obtain more credentials. Yeah. So she did it right. She really did. Um, and then the uh, other thing I was going to say is, uh, now, you could jump into something very intense like interventional radiology. And if you could pass that exam, which we have a connection with learning uh, interventional radiology. Stacy, we've interviewed her before, and I would encourage you to go look at her site. Um, I don't know if they'd be able to pull up the link for Stacy, but she has an additional course to help you pass the CERC exam, if that's something. There's a huge need for that. Another area you might consider, which I didn't put down here, but uh, tumor registry. It is uh, similar to coding, very, very similar. But remember I said uh, sisters and then brother and sister. Uh, that's more like kissing cousins, <laughs> right? So, um, but there's a huge need for tumor registers. And the median age right now for tumor registers is retirement age, 65 and, and higher. So uh, I do know that that is an, they have a certificate, they have a program and a little certification, not a little, a certification that you go through. Uh, but um, it's pretty fascinating. So that might be something you would want. Uh, Rad RX is Stacy's site. Uh, again, if that is, that would be an excellent uh, credential to pick up. However, keep in mind, the CERC is a hard credential. But honestly, the from what I understand and some of the stuff that I've lurked, looked at with Stacy that Stacy's done, she's brilliant. And if, if anybody could teach you how to do that, it would be her. Uh, Lori says, do you recommend getting credential after credential as a new coder with no experience to back it up? Uh, no. I wouldn't advise you now, even look at what, um, who was that? What, what Denise, isn't her name Denise? I'm sorry. Yes, Denise did. Look at the years on Denise's post that she did those credentials. She spaced those out. So uh, she got her, you know, uh, 2013 and then 2015. 60, and then she started picking those up. So she got some experience under her belt. It would not have been wise. And, and I think Denise can probably speak to this, but, um, you know, if she had gotten her CPC in 2013 and then just start and said, you know, I'm a fabulous test taker and just bam, 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 started knocking them out. 
there is no there's no weight behind that and um it would be a poor investment i think in money and time unless the caveat to that is if you had been in the medical field for a long time maybe you're a clinician or um one of the therapists you know see uh PTOT, you know what I mean? You you have a medical background in some avenue. That's different because you have that to back up for experience. It may not be in coding, uh, but you they they know you have a, a background into the industry. But if you're new, no, that wouldn't be wise to do that. That just proves that you're a good test taker. And Honestly, there are some people that are so good at test taking, they can knock out credentials right and left. And that doesn't mean they know what they're doing uh, in the real world. And, and But others are very good. So I'm not saying that having multiple credentials is a bad thing. I'm just saying that um, when I see people that have multiple credentials, the first thing that pops into my head is they're a really good test taker. Uh, and that's because they've taken lots of tests and they've earned the ability to do that. But also... Once you get into doing some of these credentials, they're very similar, right? And and so the basics are all there, then the specialty works off of that. Um, Jennifer, there is um link there uh at the very end of the uh, slide deck, we have resources. So I've put those on there. Uh, I did not put the um, Stacy's the RAT RX, but we'll make sure that gets on the slide deck for you. So now you know what their credentialing options are, and you have to start thinking about it. You know, what am I? What am I interested in? Uh, if you do not, if you don't know where to go, my two top choices for you would be number one, risk adjustment, because they hire new coders. Period. Uh, they would also hire you with just a CPC as a new, you know, you wouldn't have to pick up another credential. However, uh, the, I, I would still consider investing time in the CRC credential. It is very beneficial and it will definitely get you a job faster. Excuse me. Number two would be billing, would be uh, um, having those those sisters next to each other. and. Um, Unless the, uh, there is a specialty, just you have to think about what what do you bring to the table? What's your background? If, say, you were a supervisor at a fast food restaurant for 20 years, uh, your knees can't take it anymore, and you um, picked up the coding credential because you knew somebody that said that was a great job opportunity for you. You did it and you're having a little bit of trouble getting into because you don't have any medical experience whatsoever. Well, the fact that you have that supervisory experience does make a difference in one of these others like practice management, um, compliance, billing, uh, all of those uh, would play a part in, um, you know, so so don't just don't just grab one out of the bag. Think about what you have to offer. And also, um, the reason I put this slide is think outside the box. Think about what the need in your area is. Do you want to work remote? If you want to work remote, um, risk adjustment is mo a lot of times is remote. Even billing is remote now compared to the others. None of the others are, okay? From Risk adjustment uh, down, none of those are going to be remote. Uh, now, CDI might, you know, maybe, but um, those are all, they're going to need you there in the office. So, so think about that. But think outside the box. See what the need is in your area or from going to your local chapters and seeing what's out there. Maybe it's a matter of you getting a job in one of the doctor's offices and, um, letting them know you're eager to learn and being willing to uh, take on new roles and then um, them seeing that you're adaptable, that you get along with everybody. And then they, then you let them know, you, you remind them that you are uh, a credentialed coder uh, and that you're building up your experience and then you might be able to write your own ticket. 
let's say. So let's let's break down the pros and cons. Um, let's see, make sure I've got everything. Who hires new CRCs? Everything I see wants two or three years of experience. Well, now, Marcy, they, they will say that, uh, but a lot of the uh, MA plans will hire new coders. So uh, the one thing you need to do is connect with a recruiter, but also you need to um, consider getting the, the CRC will definitely get you hired without two or three years of experience, most likely. Uh, Sunny says CCS or CRC, which one is good? They're completely two, di two different credentials. Uh, the CCS is an inpatient credential and um, the CRC is risk adjustment uh, specialty credential. It, um, it, it depends. I honestly tell people that um, the CCS, new coders don't get hired for inpatient. You need experience. You need years under your belt, uh, at least a couple. Uh, so if I had to choose, if I was a, uh, got a credential and was looking to pick up another one, then I wouldn't get the CCS. You're not going to get a job as a new coder as, as inpatient. Can you do inpatient as a CPC? Yes. Um, if they want to take a chance on you, if you've got years of experience under your belt, but it, there's just too much money involved and uh, too much um, opportunity for error. And so only experienced coders get uh, put in inpatient. So I would steer clear of that, Sunny. Uh, I, if I had to choose between the CCS and the CRC, I would nab the CRC. So the pros and cons. The positive. Let's look at that. Any education is going to be good. Uh, just like Tom mentioned there in the beginning, how is he staying fresh? He's picking up training for another credential. Whether he sits for that other credential or not may wait and see, but he's staying fresh. He's broadening his horizons. Uh, does the employer care how many credentials you have? And uh, again, it, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And that's where I go with, sometimes you can get hired doing risk adjustment with the CPC. And uh, therefore that's, that is just a lot of times knowing the right people to be connected with. And remember these contracts for risk adjustment, a lot of times um, they aren't very long contracts. They only may, they may only work you for a few months, but it doesn't matter because that's a few months of actual live experience that you've gotten. Uh, so that's good as well. And that's, it all has to do with the time that these pulls uh, are, and they have these cues of encounter of cases that you've got to do and you've got to get them done in a certain amount of time and so on and so forth. Um, opens up a scope of opportunities when you have more than one credential. Uh, uh, be very careful when you pick, though. And we talked about that. Uh, learn first, experience second. That is, um, like I said, you don't want to go get a CCS and expect to get a job with no experience in the medical field as an inpatient coder. It's just not going to happen. Of course, if you believe in unicorns and that glitter fly, you know, uh, follows them around, then maybe, but uh, it is a kind of a unicorn moment to, to see that happen. Uh, but like Tom had mentioned before, he's getting the, um, uh, he's learning another credential, uh, thinking outside the box of what probably would be available or that he's seen uh, in his area, as well as um, what he's seeing with a recruiter maybe, and then picking up the uh, experience once he has that credential and they're willing to take a chance on you. Uh, let's see, Jason says, Let's see. The CCO side is not recommending risk adjustment class unless you already have coding experience. In my opinion, that is true, but it means you haven't taken a course. If you've not taken and gotten, if you have the CPC, then you're well suited to take the CRC course. Uh, but in my opinion, if you have no experience in the medical field and you decide to become um, 
get a credential, you wouldn't want to start with a CRC. Uh, I, I think the learning curve is not going to be there. And so that's kind of what that that statement is, Jason. So um, thank you for mentioning that so we could unpack that and explain. Uh, I was hired last week for coding and billing. Carla, very good. And is it because you're doing you're doing both coding and billing. I still think there's more positions out there for billers. I'm not particularly fond of billing. I did it for a year and didn't resonate with me. Um, but there's always it seems like jobs for billers. Uh, Carla says, "Ar, I missed my CPC exam by a small percentage. What's the best way to review or study to make sure I pass?" this time. My new employer has been wonderful and have stated sometimes it takes twice. And that's true, Carla. Absolutely true. I took it twice and I went in real cocky and thought, oh, I know how to, I know how to do this and, um, and uh, missed it by two and was very, very humbled and uh, went and took it the second time after I put a little time into uh, learning to test. Uh, better to be a better test taker. And that being said, Carla, my suggestion uh, would be to pick up the bat um, technique that we offer because most people, especially when they're really close like that, they just need um, to understand the way to test to <clears throat> put them over the hump. It's not that you don't know what you're doing. It's just that, you know, this is a hard exam. And some of us are not as good test takers as others. And there's some little tips along the way that can make you um, recall things a little easier, uh, be calmer when you test. Uh, and, and, there's a whole litany of things. So go to the cco.us forward slash bat, B-H-A-T. It stands for Bubble Highlight Annotate Technique. And Laureen came out with this back in 1999. I think it will be better beneficial to you. That would be my suggestion. It's a very small investment. And um, the hardest thing is to get through that CPT. And it shows you how to bubble highlight and annotate your CPT manual. And we also have the annotations for the ICD-10 just will put you over the roof. And it also comes a practice exam. So I think you'll benefit from that. Now let's look at the, the, the cons. Uh, one is the cost, right? You've already invested as a new, uh, coder. Uh, you spent the money for your course. You spent the money for the exam. You bought the manuals and everything. So you would save money by already having the manuals if you're in the current year. So that's good. And um, the other thing is time. Do you have the time to invest to study more for another credential? Because you can't just pick up one after you had another. Now, the caveat to that is, you know what? The CPC and the COC are pretty similar. Could you sit for the CPC and maybe sit for the COC right after it? Maybe. <laughs> you might be able to. If you're not sure, why don't you take our COC practice exam? We have a free COC practice exam. See how you do. Um, mostly the COC is outpatient uh, surgery centers type thing. And um, some of the modifiers are a little bit different. And there's a few little rules that are different. But uh, educational burnout. How long have you been studying? You know, do you have a full-time job and you've been studying and then you sat for the credential and are you exhausted? Is this really the right time to sit for another credential? Weigh that out because you don't want to burn out uh, uh, and lose the excitement of, you know, this new career path. Are you overqualified? Uh, maybe you have a bachelor's degree in basket weaving and uh, you sat for the credential. You've got excellent supervisory experience. And I mean that jokingly saying basket weaving because it really doesn't matter what your degree is in. But if you've got a bachelor's degree, that bumps you up on um, opportunities. And then, um, you know, uh, is is it going to be beneficial to you? If you're a clinician and you picked up the C, uh, the credential, and do you really need one? Nah, you're probably fine. You just need to network and find the right recruiter to help you along the way. Can you do the job? Don't sit for a credential that you have no um, opportunity of a career path. Uh, in other words, don't sit for a CDI credential if you've never 
had any background in uh, medical records. The only medical records you've ever seen were when in your classes. That's not going to be conducive to um, being able to pick up missed opportunities and documentation. You know, uh, if you've never seen an MRI or, or M, uh, 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 EMR ever, you know, live or worked in one, no, that's not going <laughs> to, CDI is not going to be uh, an arena for you. Uh, so again, can you do the job? Just because you pass the credential doesn't mean that you could do the job. So don't pick a credential. I'm not saying don't take another credential. I'm just saying think about the credential that you're going to take to make sure it will be a good career path for you um, if you're taking it to help you get an uh, opportunity to open doors. And are there openings? If if you live in a rural area uh, where you can't get to a clinic or um, hospital within an hour, you're not going to be driving that far for a job. The you know commute's not going to be uh, good for you. Then why would you get a credential that would be one that you have to work in a clinic, like an office manager or uh, compliance. And uh, those aren't going to be good stepping stones for you because they are meant for in-house uh, positions. And uh, so you would want to look more for remote uh, positions that are conducive to remote work, like risk adjustment. All of those are areas that I would consider. Uh, Carla says, um, I am a bit older and not as good of a test taker. Thank you. That, is, and again, don't let your age detour you from this role. Uh, the median age is for coders is over 45, I believe. And um, so that's not going to be a problem. However, I understand completely what you mean about test taking and not being as sharp in there as test. When's the last time you had to take a test except for the credential you just got, right? Um, let's see. By Carrie Elizabeth says, I plan to take my CRC next month and currently work as an HCC coder. See, Carrie, she's correct in that you can get a job as um, with a credential and not be a risk adjustment credential. And you might want to share, Carrie, how you found that position uh, uh, so that it would benefit some of the others that are looking for that. The risk adjustment is growing every single year. Opportunities are out there that um, weren't even just a couple of years ago. Michelle says, what if you take an inpatient coding course with a CPC uh, with work experience supporting billing and coding professionals? Will that help you do an inpatient present? Yes. Okay. So, Michelle, the caveat that you've got there is that what you have the CPC, you're going to take the inpatient credential with work experience supporting billing and coding professionals. That would, uh, I would take a chance on that. Yes. That would be beneficial. And a couple reasons why. CPC is an outpatient credential. Can you do inpatient? Yes. It's kind of a gold standard, you know, but it doesn't have ICD-10 PCS in it. And that's what inpatient does uh, is uh, ICD-10 and ICD-10, or CM and PCS. So uh, you're, learning, you're learning another code set, but if you have experience with support, of those areas, not only will that give you the right verbiage when you're talking in the interview, uh, uh, they're more willing to, to give a chance to train, but it also states that, um, that you are already duly invested, right? So I, I think, Michelle, that you would have opportunities and you've probably networked, you know people, and networking is very important. Mm -hmm. Uh, a recruiter reached out to me. They saw my profile on LinkedIn. Yes, uh, very good. And I redid my profile and resume. I was previously a pharmacy technician. Very good. Okay, so you already had that little bit of medical background. That was beneficial to you. That bumps you up in the queue of people. Uh, having a recruiter uh, is also excellent. 
and you find recruiters on LinkedIn. Uh, you made two really good points, Carrie Elizabeth. One, you updated your LinkedIn profile and you redid your resume. That's how you get your foot in the door. So I would suggest that you go to Project Resume and We've interviewed her uh, also. I think her name's Anne. Anne. And uh, there's a YouTube video if you want to go check that out. Projectresume.net. Have her look at your resume. She can tweak it and give you advice specifically geared towards the position you want. And I'm sure she'd be willing, and it's probably part of um, the process to look at your LinkedIn profile and get those keywords that grab the interest of recruiters. Uh, again, that will be extremely beneficial to you. It is not very much of an investment. I would say it's between $50 to $100 to have that done and absolutely worth it uh, uh, to work with, with her. Very good. And that's it, guys. There's the links uh, for you. Uh, know that we love what we do at CCO. Our goal <laughs> is to network with you, educate with you, and uh, help you get certified with the courses that we teach and stay certified with the CEU opportunities that we have. Uh, we have our CCO club uh, that you can get CEUs and communicate and network with us. But most of all, we really want you to know that we have fun doing what we do. We love what we do and we want to give back to our community and our peers. Uh, if there's others out there like you that are interested in getting certified, then uh, check us out. It's real easy to find us, cco.us. And if you're interested in our club, it's cco.us forward slash club. We have fun because we love what we do. And we hope that resonates with you and you share with uh, other people and let us know that we're here for you. Let's see. Uh, oh, a PR just told me yesterday they were doing a social event for coders. PR. All right, guys. Oh, you know what? Um, uh, oh, a recruiter. Great. Interview recruiters in the past. Yes, we have. We have. They're on our YouTube channel. And um, reach out and look for us on LinkedIn. Uh, there's a CCO profile on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, Lori is on LinkedIn. Reach out, find us, and uh, say hi. All right. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Bye. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.